Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, free site, dwyervip.com, free site. Today is May the 9th, 2018. Let's talk about Golovkin's destruction of Martirosian. He delivered for us. He got the KO. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say, in other sports, what makes an athlete great is readily apparent, right? You look at a baseball pitcher and the gun gets up to 100 miles an hour and you say, oh, this guy throws hard, right? You can see the ball move. You say, wow, you know, this guy really has great movement on his pitches, right? You watch a basketball game, you see a guy with three-point range and a quick release, let's say a Steph Curry, and you say, wow, you know, this guy has range. You know, this guy has a great shot. In boxing, sometimes it's hard. You know, let's just talk about three great middleweights here in history, right? You look at Carlos Monzon, and you realize that this slugger had one of the best jabs in boxing history. When he's hitting guys with the jab, like Larry Holmes, he's bludgeoning them. Right? The other guy does desperate things because it's a desperate situation. He can't continue to get hit by that jab. So, of course, guys end up walking into Monzon's other punches. Let's talk about Marvin Hagler for a minute. Right now, Hagler, of course, is inverted, right? He's not even fighting the right way. He's a righty fighting southpaw. But more importantly, Marvin Hagler got great power, great power on very short punches, right? Marvin's not winding up. That Thomas Hearns shootout, Thomas Hearns is throwing long punches much longer than Marvin Hagler, right? Hagler gets inside. The beauty of Hagler is he could throw punches like this on you all day and just beat the daylights out of you. Now, what I want people to do, if possible, if you have it taped, is to look at the Golovkin fight. I want you to look at the last combination that Golovkin throws at a very good fighter, right, Vanis Martirosian. I believe the secret to Golovkin's success is right there on film. He throws a punch, quite frankly, that boxing purists didn't know existed. Right? Rather than talk about Bigfoot and have people speculate on, you know, what I mean or whatever, Rather than talk about UFOs and then have a debate, here you actually have it on film and it's clear. What I want you to do is as you look at the combination that leaves Martirosian on the canvas, I want you to key on Golovkin's left hand. Right now, let me just say, during that exchange, and I know it sounds crazy, Golovkin throws a straight hook, right? What do I mean by that? You know, normally guys throw a hook and the arm is a hook, right? You know, hooks normally go off at, you know, 90 degree angles. Sometimes a guy will have a long hook. That hook goes off at greater than 90 degrees, Right, folks, in that last combination that Golovkin throws at Martirosian, you're going to notice that he throws a left hand. It's not a straight left, right? He's not throwing it straight like this. Rather, what he does is he has his hand straight, but he throws it like a hook. This isn't even a long hook, folks. It's, his arm looks practically straight. He throws it like this. It hits Martirosian. And you see Martirosian's head move. 
right? For me, the most important line Mortarosian said after the fight was that all of Golovkin's punches were hard. In other words, this left hand that comes in like this, that's how odd it looks. Look at the film. Don't believe me, please. Look at the film. This left hand that he throws had big time power on it. Right? The secret to Golovkin is that the angles of the punches that he throws are unorthodox. Right? They're not by the book. Even his right hand, Golovkin, you can't tell what he's throwing. And even if you could, you wouldn't know how to block it. Right? You'll notice Martirosian is looking at him and is trying to block shots here. And the shots get through because Golovkin somehow throws power shots with a loop on them. Right? He, he throws punches that quite frankly defy regular boxing terms, right? I know many of you are laughing. Straight hook, what the hell is that? All I ask is that you look at the tape. As I said, this is not a Bigfoot or UFO type thing where you see, you know, a glance at something and you say, was that Bigfoot? No, no, this is actually a boxing tape that you can rewind or back up. I know many millennials have no idea what I'm talking about when I say rewind. You can go back in the video and replay the final sequence. And you're going to see that Golovkin, when he opens up, is throwing punches at weird angles. The weirdest is that straight left hook. Right? The worst possible injury Golovkin could suffer from would be a rotator cuff injury. Because, folks, I'm just telling you, this guy is throwing huge punches. And if you're a by-the-book orthodox fighter, you're going to see him go like this, and you're going to think, oh, that's a hook. Where could it land? The problem is Golovkin, right, can throw those hooks from far away because his arm is almost straight when some of them land, right? So I believe Ivanis Martirosian sees Golovkin, even if he could predict the punch Golovkin's going to throw, let's say a hook, left hook. I believe Martirosian thought to himself, he's too far away to hit me with a hook, right? That hook's going to swing by my face like this. I can lean my head back just a little bit to avoid it. Of course, because Golovkin's arm is straight, again, look at the film. Because it's straight, and because Golovkin is a gifted puncher, in other words, he's throwing boxing's equivalent of 100 mile an hour pitches. I'm not saying his hand speed's that fast. I'm saying the power of his punches is that hard. And if you stand and try to trade with him, and you're upright, and he has a second to aim his shots, you're in a lot of trouble, right? Martirosian actually hurts Golovkin at the end of the first round. He actually has one of the better moments against Golovkin that an opponent has had. Now, I know that's forgotten. Knockouts cause amnesia, right? We see Martirosian down in the second round, and we say, oh, this is a mismatch. But understand, even after getting hurt, Golovkin continues to hunt. Right? So there you have Golovkin, and he's throwing unorthodox punches that you cannot duplicate. You cannot duplicate in sparring. Right? In other words, your sparring partner might be very clever, might be unorthodox. He's not going to throw the kind of straight left hook. That was one of the most devastating punches of this last fight. One of the secrets to the Golovkin-Canelo fight, one of the reasons why Canelo may have gone the distance is because Canelo went to Big Bear and Canelo trained with Golovkin. In other words, when Canelo entered the ring, he had an idea 
of the angles of Golovkin's punches. Right? Let's say he had enough of an idea where he started to run. Right? He, he wasn't going to stick around. He understood, hey, this pocket, I'm getting out of here. I'm backing away. I can't stand here like Mortarosian tries to do. And actually try to block the shots. Right? So what you're looking at with Golovkin is a singular talent. Right? Few guys in the sport, pound for pound, hit as hard as he does. Right? It's as if he has two of Deontay Wilder's right hands. Right? The reason why Golovkin just pound for pound is more dangerous than a Deontay Wilder is that with Wilder, I know the punch is going to be straight. Right? So if I mess up and I realize I've given Wilder a chance to throw his Sunday punch, I can assume, okay, this punch is coming in straight. Let me duck, let me block, let me do something to absorb the impact. With Golovkin, he can be right in front of me. I won't be able to tell the angles of his punches. Right? I can have a hand here. And Golovkin can throw his normal right hand and hit me right here. Right? The challenge for opponents in the milliseconds that they have to deal with an opponent like Golovkin in an actual bout, the challenge for them is to figure out on the fly how to deal with the curve on Golovkin's punches, right? Very few things are straight with him, right? It's coming in at a little bit of an angle. The adjustment period for an opponent is going to be in the first third of a fight, isn't it? If you haven't sparred with Golovkin, if you're Danny Jacobs, on a night when you do tremendously well, when you actually... Change the angles on Golovkin. Understand, Jacobs gets caught early. He's on the canvas early in the fight. Right? Martirosian, quite frankly, against Golovkin, wasn't able to figure out the angles. Right? He's looking at Golovkin. Golovkin must not have a tell on when he's going to throw punches. Right? What you'll notice... In the Martirosian fight, it's the same thing you'll notice in the Marco Antonio Rubio fight. It's the same thing you'll notice in the Martin Murray fight. Right? These guys are standing there. They see Golovkin. They know the risk. And yet Golovkin, even when the guy has a hand up, is somehow able to land power shots around the guard. Right? His punches have just enough of a curve to get through. And, of course, when you're there and you see Golovkin coming over and you say, hey, he's not going to land a jab on me, right? He throws the jab straight. When you say, hey, I'm not going to let him land a left jab, I can take his jab from this spacing. And then Golovkin gets off a straight punch. As it's coming, you see it's, you know, his arm is straight. But it's out here. So you're thinking to yourself, he can't hit me with the left hook from this spacing. And then, of course, with the straight hand, he not only is touching you, but the punch is concussive. So again, I know HBO has been very diligent. Very diligent in taking down the videos of the fight. I know I posted a link to the golovkin Martirosian fight in my favorites folder here. That's gone, right? HBO protects their intellectual property rights, right? I'm not faulting them for it at all, right? But what you need to do if you're a hardcore boxing fan and you don't have a tape of this fight is you need to find a tape of this fight. Right? It's short enough. That second round, you can dissect it. Just understand, Vanis Martirosian had never been stopped 
in his career, right? Had never been stopped in his career. Just to understand that Martirosian has fought multiple champions. Understand too that Martirosian comes to win, lands his own hard shots at the end of round one. Right? Martirosian is not running in the fight. He gets crushed with an uppercut. You could tell that he's trying to clear his head a little bit as the you know fight goes forward. Then, of course, he gets hit with a combination that includes right hands with curves. I'd be talking about those. But for the absolutely breathtaking straight left hook that Golovkin somehow gets off. Folks, look at the left hand that lands. It's not a jab. It's not a straight punch. Golovkin winds up and throws it from like out here. There's no bend. There's no bend in his arm. Right? I've watched boxing a long time. That's the first time I've seen that punch. And if you had told me about it, I would have thought, how could a guy get leverage throwing a left hand where he winds up and keeps his arm straight? And, of course, on the film, you see Martirosian's head go back. In the post-fight video, you see Martirosian say, all of this guy's punches were hard. Folks, that wasn't a placeholder punch. That's one of the key punches that end the fight. So, let's just say Golovkin is back in the saddle. He got the KO for us, as we expected. I do believe Martirosian came with the idea of, hey, I'm going to test this guy. I've looked at the highlights, and this guy couldn't be as good as advertised. I'm guessing after the fight, Martirosian is rethinking his decision to enter the middleweight division. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me also say, too, understand the way boxing works. Golovkin has many mandatory contenders. In today's boxing world, it's going to be hard for even the very best, even a future Hall of Famer like this, to be the undisputed middleweight champion. Right? There are just too many sanctioning bodies. There are just too many guys to fight. Right? So if he follows through, for whatever reason, contractual reasons, box office reasons, and fights Canelo in the fall, you need to expect some sanctioning body to say, hey, we're stripping you of the title, right? If Golovkin wants to be undisputed, he's going to have to circle back around the boxing airport, and after he fights Canelo, he's then going to have to hope that somebody else has picked up a collection of belts so he can fight that person, win multiple belts, and be undisputed, right? Understand, too, that's easier said than done. Someone like Billy Joe Saunders has the kind of left-handed style behind a jab that could give Golovkin problems. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.